was your first rehearsal with Sofia Philharmonic. What was your impressions from the orchestra? Today we had the first rehearsal, first meeting together with Sofia Philharmonic uh, and Maestro Todorov. And in the Nielsen Flute Concerto, we, we created a great dialogue um, of using the colors of every section, every instrument in the orchestra and bringing this out like a flower blossoming during the rehearsal. This was my feeling uh, working on the Nielsen Flute Concerto today. Uh, please tell us about more, the, more the piece that uh, you will playing uh, about uh, Flute Concerto by Carl Nielsen. Carl Nielsen uh, wrote his flute concerto at the end of his life when um, his doctor sent him on a trip across uh, Europe to get some vitamin C and more sun uh, in, the, in the southern countries. So he went by train in a very long journey for several months uh, through Germany, Switzerland, Italy, all the way to the south and coming back then through France and ending up in this trip in Paris where this flute concerto was first performed. So these pages from the concerto are impressions from different locations, improvement of his health, uh, memories from Copenhagen, from Denmark, from his family, from his friends. So all of this is coming one after the other and creates a piece with a marvelous um, evolution in it. You don't find a structure like in uh, usual romantic music where you have a theme and variations and then the theme comes back again like this. This doesn't exist in the Nielsen music. It's progressive music. You start here and you end there and this is life and that's how it is. Um, this makes the, the Nielsen concerto which was then introduced and first performed in Paris in 1926 uh, at the composer's invitation of the French Composer Society at uh, and uh, Maurice Ravel was the president of this society and said this man, Carl Nielsen, is one of the great living composers and is, is bringing us forward in music history. How do you juggle your role as a principal flutist for the Berlin Philharmonic with your career as an, an international soloist? I started uh, deciding that I would become a flute player professionally at age 15 when I won my first competition. And it was a national competition in Belgium and then two years later I do an international competition in Belgium also, which I also win. And then I start going for the international market, so to say, uh, piece by piece. I'm still studying in Paris Conservatoire. Um, and while I'm still studying there, I get my first orchestra job also, part-time in another uh, city in Basel. I was commuting between both. And this is how the whole thing just naturally developed for me, uh, doing music with friends and colleagues, chamber music in Paris, studying the virtuosic pieces, preparing international competition, get, gaining some experience as a soloist, and getting some co concerts engagement as a soloist and as a recitalist, getting some recordings also, and in the same time getting experience in the orchestra. Um, it's not necessarily incompatible, it's not necessarily compatible. In the structure where I developed and where I grew up and with my health and my energy, it's not a problem. Um, it's a problem more for the time that's left for normal life uh, with your dear family and friends, etc. Um, but, but for me, it was really trying to, with, through my instruments, to grow into the big, biggest possible musical world. What is the feeling to be a part of one of the best orchestras of all time, the Berlin Philharmonic privilege, responsibility or something else? As an artist you feel the responsibility on stage, whether you are a soloist, uh, a recitalist or an orchestra musician. Of course, as being a member of the institution, Berlin Philharmonic, or the brand Berlin Philharmonic, if, if you prefer, having our concerts streamed every week live on the internet for hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and this has been helping us and the music world throughout the pandemic also uh, with, the, with COVID. It's a big responsibility, but uh, you also get the uh, adrenaline and reward from being on stage. Of course, we go on the grill every time. And uh, we have to test 
during the rehearsal process the boundaries of how we can play this music with this conductor, with this soloist, um, and make it work the best possible, or on tour deal with the acoustics, with the space, with the artist. But I'm always there to make it a successful time. This is my uh, commitment as a musician on stage and everybody else in Berlin Philharmonic. We are this kind of uh, Philharmonic society and we choose each other for the next generation of musicians also. You are very well known as one of the greatest or the greatest living flutist. How do you maintain this position? I'm happy to hear that uh, people uh, consider my work uh, positively on stage and I'm also very happy to see a lot of young flute players, teachers coming with their students, colleagues coming to my concerts. Um, for me, I never had a career plan. I had a lot of things that I wanted to do. Great music musicians with whom I was hoping to play one day or the other and hoping that they would also enjoy playing with me. They have been my model, uh, examples for me. And, uh, and growing, getting into this, this musical world like this has, has been my, my goal, actually. So it was not about projecting myself so much, but to grow into this world um, with respect. Um, and I hope that this is something that comes across the joy of making music in, uh, in such a strong and uh, sustained uh, environment. I think is something very rewarding. And, and when I feel the expectation from the audience while with a welcoming us on stage, I give back this energy in the shape of music in the performance. Why did you choose um, the flute as your future? Or, and uh, what was your first impression when you saw the flute? I, my, my first encounter with the music was actually on a holiday trip in Spain and uh, I remember hearing flamenco guitar and I was really impressed by this. So obviously I was easily to be impressed by musical performance, more than other things, because this is a really flash that I remember from my childhood. Um, but then, a few months or years later, we moved to another city, Rome, in Italy, and we could hear several musical instruments from the neighbor's uh, house. And there, through the window, I could hear the several sounds, but there was one melody that I really liked, and it was when I asked what it is, this music that I hear, they told me it's the Mozart Flute Concerto. And I said, I want to, I want to play the Mozart uh, Flute Concerto. I was age five. And first I learned on the recorder flute how to read the music and how to play. Then I took the other flute. I got an, uh, a student, of course, beginner's model. And I was so happy first time I opened the box. Like this. Oh, I was so happy. I was smiling all the time. I could not put my lips together to make one sound on this instrument, you know? So it was not a disappointing experience, the first, first one, because I was too much happiness. The flute has been a, an encounter, a coincidence. Actually, I love the cello, I love the trumpet, I love the horn uh, and the music that's been written for them, but my voice is the flute and that's how it is. And I try to make the most out of it. What is the most pleasant thing in your profession? And how do you achieve the unique sound of your instrument? The most uh, pleasant thing about music is the constant dialogue with uh, people coming from different backgrounds, different cultures, and trying to find a common uh, sense and a common uh, uh, language in the making of the music together. And this can be very different depending whether we're dealing with improvised music or with old music or recent music or more academic music, but this enriches each other uh, from this experience. And this is really something that I find so rewarding and where I'm always looking forward to the next project. Still, after 40 years, uh, nearly, I'm exaggerating a little bit, 35 years on, uh, on stage. It's essential as a flute player when, that, that you come to the rehearsal prepared, uh, that you have uh, done your, your work of cleaning up, of mastering the piece. But maybe uh, if you play in an orchestra, you should not be 
you, you should not have decided about the interpretation because the conductor will give the interpretation. When I come as a soloist, I will be in charge of the interpretation and there I have a plan that I can make already with the score. I don't need to have the instruments in my hand in order to decide from the text, from the music, what is important, what is to be heard uh, and um, how I'm going to perform this, this music. With which flute do you play? And it is made exclusively for you? I bought my flute back in 1989 when I was 19 after having won several uh, competitions. I had enough money to get what was the state of the art in that moment. It was a Brandon Cooper flute and I chose a Sheridan head joint. All of this comes from Boston, United American States. Um, but um, it was not, I mean, it was made on order because you had to order and wait for several years to get it, but it was not made specifically to my requests. I took the instrument that was delivered to me, uh, and, uh, and I've been learning to play it and to make uh, the most out of it, and this is my most faithful partner, uh, really, uh, in making music since, since that moment, since 33 years. I also have other instruments, because now it, it has in 33 years, it is a bit vintage, has some weaknesses in certain areas or needs to be fixed sometimes or to go for repair or just maintenance. And then I have other instruments that do the job absolutely beautifully, that are more modern, but with, with which I have not yet spent so much time. So I don't feel maybe as confident when I play in, a, in a very different projects in the same week. Flutist player of yesteryear, do you most wish you could have worked with? I wish I had been able to meet uh, Paul Tafanel and uh, Philippe Gobert. These are two flute players who actually started writing books and writing music uh, and also were conductors, so very complete musicians and also great performers, about how to play the new instrument when the metal flute was invented and was adopted instantly in Paris, and they were founders of what we call the Great French Flute School. After that, there have been several generations with which I've been in contact. So therefore, uh, I've met uh, really all the great students of uh, the next generation, of Marcel Moïse, etc., through my first teacher, and then later on until the Paris Conservatory, where I studied in this tradition. But these two French musicians, Paul Tafanel was a conductor in Paris. He met Tchaikovsky, who was writing a flute concerto for him. And unfortunately, I, we have lost these parts. But it would be great if we had uh, also a Tchaikovsky concerto for the, for the flute, of course. And Gobert, I have some recordings from him, which I heard in some archives. And it's the most beautiful, timeless, beautiful playing. Uh, master of his instrument, absolutely. And he left beautiful compositions, more in the format of salon music or chamber music, but really most valuable contribution. I would love to have spent more time with these guys. Your teacher was Aurel Nicolet. What kind of person was he? So my latest teacher was uh, Aurel Nicolet. It was after the studies in the Paris Conservatoire, and um, I was lucky enough having a job in Basel to live not very far from his place, actually across the street. Um, and whenever he was not on concert tour, he would uh, also coach me for a few hours. And then when the position in Berlin Philharmonic got open, was announced, and also the same year the Geneva International Competition was happening for flute, he took really most of his uh, month of July uh, to, to coach me. Uh, to prepare me for, the, for, for, for this in order to enter, to, 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 to go to a different level, basically. So he really transmitted a lot to me. And this was incredibly generous. He had had the similar experience because 45 years before, in the same year, he won the Geneva competition and the Berlin job. Uh, so it really is a kind of master and disciple uh, relationship. And actually, with other musicians who have known him, we are going to, to be on tour um, together in the coming year and celebrate in the various places, notably in Switzerland and where he has been also teaching, um, to celebrate his memory, the memory of Aurel Nicolet, as I find probably 
one of the great, greatest uh, pedagogues uh, beyond any academicism, just transmitting and the energy, the intensity of the work being done, how he transformed, and I've seen in this in every masterclass, he could transform every student in a few seconds. What advice do you have for a young flutist player? My first advice for a young flute player would be breathe. Try to fill your body, not just the lungs, but also breathe through the fingers, the hands, to the feet. Take the energy, absorb the air that is around you, the atmosphere. And then you can uh, use this air without having to press, without having to use strength. You just let it out and you control how much. And this will help us so much. So it is really important to breathe in the beginning. And then we can use little breaths to help us out. Um, and then the other thing is, is because we don't use pressure on the flute, we don't use tension uh, compared to other wind instruments, is we, we, it's all about control, not about power. And for this, it takes a longer time to develop the mus muscles here. There are about 180 muscles in the face that need to be synchronized and controlled in order to help shaping the sound. And this you can only achieve if you practice daily. We have books written by Tafanel and Gobert, but also by Reichert, also by Moise, that have wonderful exercise. But when we do an exercise, we should already be training music. Because if we play stupid in an exercise, we learn how to play stupid, also later in the performance. If we learn how to make a, uh, an exercise with some musical intention, going to the next phrase like this and, and opening and closing, then we learn how to shape things. And this is something that we can use so, so beautifully in the music making. So these things are very important and don't practice the same exercise every day. Use one different exercise every day of the week and then come back to it. But use it in all, on all, starting on all of the notes of the flute's range so that you cover from the lowest note to the top note. Half an hour of this before you start playing musical pieces is always the, the best way to grow healthy in your relationship with the instrument. If you had to describe your character in a musical term, who would it be? Isn't that very limitative to limit oneself just to one musical term? The terminology is very vast. And maybe I will use one of Mozart's, Allegro Aperto, open Allegro, which means do whatever you want with it, but have fun. And you was um, born uh, together with Mozart in the same day? I was born on uh, January 27 and have been happy to follow the good star of um, Mozart's birthday, um, celebrating my 30th, my 40th and my 50th birthday on the stage of Mozarteum in Salzburg, playing Mozart flute concerto on his birthday and my birthday at the same time. Thank you, Maestro. Thank you. Thank you very much.